My name is John Kemp, and uh, make sure you're in the right room. I'm here to talk about my new book, Expressions of Place, the Contemporary Louisiana Landscape. Okay. Uh, in the past, when I've done the book festival, the earlier books, I usually had lip, so I'd sit down and talk about the things that I would leave, and I'd say, well, I, I should have talked about that, I should have mentioned this, I should have mentioned that. So what I did this time was I prepared some spontaneous ad libs that I'll read to you. That way we can talk about what the book is about, my intentions, the purpose, and the whole theme and thrust of the book. Then after that, we can um, you can ask questions if you'd like. Mm -hmm. And I also have a presentation. I have 37 slides, 37 paintings from the book, one for the, each of the 37 artists who are in the book. So I'm just going to play that on a loop while I talk, so I get some something, something to look at. Okay. Go ahead and try to put it back, John. Steve Yates from the University of Press of Mississippi, <laughs> which published the book. <laughs> <laughs> and also runs my slides here. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. didn't anticipate doing this, but here we Thank go. Thank God you were here. Uh -huh. Okay. Okay. Oh, it's grilled. Okay. Good. You're in great shape. Okay. Um, I retired four years ago from the Louisiana Endowment of the Humanities. And, um, my wife said my voice is getting weaker and weaker as time goes on, so I'm going to try to project as much as I can. <laughs> if I'm not reaching the back row, please either move up or please let me know and I'll speak a little louder. Okay. okay. Ah, the Louisiana landscape with its dark and cypress swamps, vast old coastal marshes, pine forests, sugarcane and cotton fields, radiant sunsets, and interplay of warm, misty light upon the land, have been dominant themes in Louisiana, Louisiana art since the latter half of the 19th century. Today, as in the past, Louisiana painters create images that reflect upon the beauty of nature and that changing landscape brought on by the intrusions of time and urban growth. After all of these many decades, contemporary Louisiana landscapes are as much about place as those painted a century ago. In writing expressions of place, I approach the project not as an art critic, which I'm not, Art, art historian, which I'm not, but as a journalist who has spent over three decades writing about Louisiana and, and Southern artists for various national and regional magazines. I focus especially on painting for this book, painting of landscapes as opposed to, say, multimedia or photography, because painting was the medium that launched the, the landscape genre back in the 19th century. The expressions of place is not an encyclopedia, it's uh, a catalog or a history of the visual arts, though I do preface the contemporary landscape with painting about with paintings with a brief historical essay to put it all in context, you know, how the contemporary painters in Louisiana fit into this broad century and a half historical context. Through, through the words of the artists themselves, they provide insight as to what they paint, how they paint, where they paint, why they are drawn to the Louisiana landscape, and what they are trying to say in the interpretations of the landscape. In a sense, the artists are speaking to the reader. It is as much about the landscape of their imaginations as it about the land itself. The land, environment, and nature have become an important part of their lives and how they see the world around them. Just as the 19th century artists looked to nature in its bucolic state as metaphors for the idyllic state of nature, destruction of the wilderness and spreading industrialism Many contemporary Louisiana artists have returned to nature in response to urban blight and crime, ecolo ecological changes and disasters, traffic gridlock and suburban straw, sprawl. They often portray human intrusion to nature in subtle, harmonious ways, such as a barn or a pasture, a highway cutting across the land, furrows cut deep into the soil, a rice mill planted firmly in a broad vista, or as a neglected, decaying city neighborhood. In selecting the 37 artists for this book, I considered geography, subject matter, painting style or accomplishment, and whether or not urban or rural landscapes were the primary focus of their work. Many are acclaimed artists, professionals, 
whose paintings are included in major and private collections regionally and internationally, while others have a, their followings closer to home. All, however, are driven to express their impressions of the land and light. To give a complete picture of the various artistic styles, I chose paintings that range from traditional 19th century realism, which you'll see up here in many cases, um, realism set by Simon Gunning, David Knoll, to microcosms of the broader world, the more abstract paintings that you'll see, by Alison Stewart and Megan Fleming. They, are, they and scores of others are part of that continuous tradition of landscape painting in Louisiana. In viewing the contemporary landscape painting today, it is clear that landscape painting, painting is strong, as strong in Louisiana today as it has ever been. From the 19th century to the present, this is a quote from art historians Richard Gruber and David Houston, who used to be with the Ogden Museum of Southern Art in New Orleans, artists have continually reinvigorated approaches defined by impressionism, tonalism, symbolism, and expressionism to explore the symbolic both as the expressive power of landscape painting and exploration of place. That continuum is clear in Simon Gunning's masterful vistas, vistas of the Mississippi River and Melissa Bonin's misty tonal images of Bayou Tesh, which called to mind Alexander Drisdale's ubiquitous paintings of oak trees in the early 20th and late 19th century. It is there in the abstract realism of Roland Golden's rural and urban Louisiana and the romantic realism of Alan Flavin's French Quarter scenes. It is there again in George Rodrigue's mystical landscapes of rural Acadiana, in the social realism of Shirley Massenter and Willie Birch's gritty streets of, street scenes of New Orleans, and in the sun blazed images of South Louisiana by Ray Gary and Eleanor Morgan Jr. Uh, depending on the cover, it's actually by Ray Gary from Baton Rouge. Others such as Jacqueline Bishop, Megan Fleming, Francis Pavi, Gaitha Pope, Robert Warrens, have created subtle and often not so subtle allegorical and symbolic imagery that explores contemporary eco-political, environmental, and social issues. According to art historian John Arthur, see I'm not an art historian so I quote those, those <laughs> monumental and urgent ecological problems facing the natural world haunt most contemporary landscape painters. Their images of the American landscape are not passive, while these work, works point toward a more positive side of life. Each is an open reminder of the eloquence and harmony of nature and of our physical and emotional dependence upon it. Harmony is often the underlying spirit in most landscapes. Alan Flavin likened the heart that harmony in his write paintings to writing poetry. Billy Solitary of New Orleans, however, unable to find an uncluttered natural landscape in New Orleans, paints dramatic cloud formations that hover above the city skyline. Charles Smith of Baton Rouge lives in a busy Baton Rouge suburb, but paints many of his landscapes in a nearby pasture populated only by curious cows and rolls of hay. Eleanor Morgan's rice mill in southwest Louisiana, Prairie, Louisiana Prairie seems at peace with its surroundings, and Bill Isles of Lake Charles finds solace in his imaginary pristine landscapes of southwest Louisiana. And Melissa Smith of New Orleans paints the coastal marshes from her boat on the back of her truck. Looking at the contemporary Louisiana landscape, painters in context with earlier generations reminded me of that what the French Impressionist Degas once said about his experiences in New Orleans while visiting his um, American cousins in the fall and spring of 1872 and 1873. Writing back to a friend of his in Paris, he said, everything he saw fascinated him, the people, the machinery, and marketplaces. In a letter home to a friend, he wrote, I am accumulating plans which will take me 10 lifetimes to carry out. Of course, he returned home a few months later without realizing those plans, but generations of Louisiana artists who have followed continue to fulfill that dream. That's essentially what the book is about. And I've been writing about these artists for many, many years, and uh, so I had a chance to go back and revisit their work after some of them 20 years ago, I'd go back, I went back and vi revisited them, interviewed them, got their new work and everything. So I got a chance to see how they, they themselves had progressed during the years. And I learned a great deal about, because uh, I'd been writing, well, first with Times Picayune when I was doing those, and then for the Louisiana Life magazine, uh, American Artist magazine, Art News magazine, and a number of other magazines. And 
14 or 15 other books about uh, Louisiana artists. So I got a chance to, to learn about how this is done and how, interesting for me, how it fit into this overall context of Louisiana landscape painting from the mid 19th century. When most of the work was not done by Louisiana artists because like everyone else, including yourself, you know, you become familiar with the territory and your surroundings, and you really don't see it. It took artists from the northeastern states, from, from France, from, from France, coming to this area in the late 19th century to see the magnificent light we have here and how it plays upon that landscape. So you see these paintings like Buck and all those things, all those wonderful paintings in the museums done by people from other than Louisiana painters. But of course, along the way, they taught us how to see our own landscape. And that's the wonderful thing about art, is that uh, I really wanted to write about politics when I joined the newspaper many years ago until I started writing about politicians. Then I discovered artists. And I really enjoyed how they taught me to see the ordinary world. Because as you walk around, drive down the streets and the highways of Louisiana, you begin to immediately, I did anyway, to see the world around you as in, through the eyes of artists. You begin to frame. And one particular artist was Roland Golden, who now lives in, in uh, uh, Fol no, Folsom, actually. He's, he's back from Mississippi. Oh, really? But uh, he was the first artist I wrote about. I was with the Times Picune, and, and I'd gotten tired of writing about the political things that were going on at the time. So I asked my editor if I could write a story about three artists at the same time, why these three artists did what they do. One was Bill Bennings, a sculptor in Covington. Uh, Roland Golden, who was had just moved to Folsom from New Orleans, and the third was a novelist, um, a Walker Percy. So I, I got the chance to talk with him and else. And I learned from Ro Roland, seeing his work, how he took the ordinary things, a weed in a ditch, an old sharecropper shack in the, in the country somewhere, and how he framed that, and it became, it became a, a work of art all of a sudden. And so as I traveled, I framed the world around me, around me as, I, uh, as an artist would do, or as a photographer would do. And you had these wonderful compositions. So I no longer wanted to write about politicians. <laughs> I write only about artists now. And New Orleans history. <laughs> That's it. Now. So I'd be glad i be glad to ask and answer any questions you may have about the process, about the artists themselves. And anything else I can do? I apologize, I got in late. This is a, a, a got what you're showing up here are yes. represented in the book. That's here. correct. Well they're one for each artist. Oh, the one? book has uh, the book has this uh, historical narrative that puts the whole landscape painting in context from the mid 19th century to the present. And then it has biographies of each of the artists in which I interview each artist and they tell me why they paint, where they paint, and how it completes their own lives and what they, did and what they do. And it has about six paintings, seven paintings, depending upon the artist, for each of the 37 artists. Yeah, I know a lot of them. And they come from everywhere from Monroe, Shreveport, Alexandria, Natchitoches, Baton Rouge, Lafayette, Lake Charles, St. Tammany Parish, and, uh, and New Orleans. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So they're, they're from all over. So it was a wonderful opportunity to actually sit with them once again and interview them and talk to them and to see their work. Yeah, I want to ask Don? about David Law. Uh -huh. uh, I hadn't seen his name in a long time. Obviously, he's painting. Is he uh, still in New Orleans? No, he's in Covington. He was in the open Pearl River area, mm -hmm. and, and Hurricane down. went through there. Yeah. Katrina mm -hmm. went through there. Mm -hmm. Now he's now living in Covington. Mm -hmm. He does really nice work, very 19th century looking work, those, land, those marsh landscapes that he does. Uh -huh. Really nice work. Any questions? Mm -hmm. Is it very difficult to get permission to use these uh, paintings? Oh, quite the contrary. Mm -hmm. they, they were delighted to be in the book. and. Um, they supplied all of the paintings themselves, mm -hmm. according to certain specifications that I needed for print mm -hmm. purposes. Uh, got waivers, they signed contracts to allowing to use uh, for the book themselves and any other purpose to promote the book, including events like this. No, they were very happy to pr provide them. And you mentioned you had artists from <coughs> all over the state. Do you see any different, uh, say, aesthetic approaches approaches like say from North Louisiana to Central to South Louisiana or um, how, how do they all kind of compare? You know, I said at first I had a difficult time finding a lot of landscape painters in North Louisiana. 
because they don't have the institutions, the number of institutions that they do in, in South Louisiana. But once I dug into it, I, I did find a lot of you know, very good ones. And I, I found that they had the same range from highly expressionistic work, impressionistic work, to the traditional realism. And I, I was really pleased with, um, in many cases, the quality of the work. In fact, I found several painters that I wanted to include in the book, but it, it was too late. They'd already, the artists had already gone to work and they were laying out the book and getting ready to go to press. But I found several more in North and South Louisiana that I would have really enjoyed. Uh, including in the book, and it wasn't possible. But as far as its quality, I found some, I found some really, really good first-rate painters up, up in North, North Louisiana, because those institutions are growing up there. They have the, and I find mostly with the um, local art guilds, um, like it, like the was it, uh, River Oaks in Alexandria and the Art Guild in Natchitoches, and Ruston, Monroe, and also in Shreveport, that there's a real strong effort to have organizations that bring the artists in so they can, they can show their work. Without those, you know, you, you'll never find them. Right. Right. And they sell their work too, which is the important thing. Questions? Did you ever do any research into exhibit based on this? Actually, we did um, a part, a part of many of the artists. In, in Covington, we did one last spring. Took all of the artists from the greater New Orleans area and the St. Tammany Art Association held an exhibit of their work. Mm -hmm. They would be monumental, gather them up from all over the state to bring them in any one place. Mm -hmm. But I'll say this though, as I travel around the state with the book, going to the art guilds, those local artists are putting up exhibits of their works when I bring the book in. And you sign the books and the artists show their work that are in the, in the book or even their, their new work. They include that too in art shows. In those, in fact, I just came back from Natchitoches and Alexandria, where the artists in that area had major shows in those areas. And we're going to do, do one in Shreveport, uh, Ruston, and in West Monroe, so they can show their work also. Mm -hmm. Any other questions? This may be the shortest session you've gone through all day. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, are these a lot of self-taught uh, self artists, or are they have they gone to art school? No, and I, I address this in the book. Uh, these are all trained artists. They're trained artists, academically trained artists. Uh, if you get into the self-taught artists, it's a whole new world. That, that and Alice Yellen at the New Orleans Museum of Art did a wonderful book on that in an exhibition a few years back. And I, I was just concentrating on trained landscape painters as opposed to self-taught. Because in many cases, self-taught artists um, the landscape is really not the primary pr purpose or focus of their work. It's mostly they're telling allegorical stories, religious stories, and the, and the landscape is generally a backdrop to the story they're telling the foreground. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I wonder if you talk about Eleanor Morgan and Eleanor Morgan Jr. and what father passed to son. I mean, they're, they're both wonderful creators, but uh, the, the son's paintings are um, are somewhat more impressionistic. They're just yeah, they're very vibrant and interesting. Very vibrant. Yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, Elmore Morgan Sr., I didn't know him, but I know his work and his magnificent, magnificent posed black and white photography. And his son, Elmore Morgan Jr., who just recently died a few years ago, like three, four, five, five years ago now, lived in Maurice, Louisiana, concentrated, concentrated primarily on the prairies of south central Louisiana and does these beautiful, you saw a couple of them, highly expressionistic works of the land. Uh, but again, it's, he's doing the land and showing sort of a, uh, it's a contextual thing because really he's, he's looking at light and he's looking at the sky. That's why you see a lot of his canvases are usually big domes or cutaway things because that's the way he sees the sky as one continuum. And uh, as the Navajo did, with the world being a turtle, right? So the big dome in which we all live, and the land, the blazing sunlight coming off the land, which is really the focus of the work as opposed to the objects within the landscape. Um, of course, Elmore Morgan Jr. insisted his father as a, mm -hmm. when he was a photographer and learned how to do compositions and compose. But then he went on to Oxford and everything else where he, he <laughs> was highly trained in what was going on in Europe at that time. Is Alan Flatman still in New Orleans? 
Well, actually, Alan now lives in Folsom, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. But most of his work is in the New Orleans. Alan and I did two books together uh, a few years back. One was called French Quarter Impressions, where he said he travels the world painting, takes uh, students all over the world. Like it's taking one to Europe in a couple months. Takes students all over the world to paint. But he always returns to the New Orleans French Quarter because the, that's the source of his, his inspiration. And he constantly works in the French Quarter. But no, he, he too lives in Boston. And he calls his work the Romantic Realism. Mm -hmm. Which it is, because of the light. Yeah. Yeah. Is Mary Mark located in um, New Orleans? No, Mary's in Abita Springs. Oh. But she's now working, she's now showing with Lemieux Gallery on Julia Street. Mm -hmm. But she, yeah, she's, uh, that's an artist that I've, I've really enjoyed watch come along. Mm -hmm. I met her when she had just started. And then she, she talked about self taught. Primarily, she was self taught. She took a few art classes. But she was self-taught by going to workshops and mm -hmm. studying paintings and studying books. And I've been doing individual workshops with artists. But she does mostly the marshes of around Lake Pontchartrain, primarily the North Shore, once in a while, in, in Baton Rouge and also in the river. But uh, she's initially self-taught. Uh, first time I met Mary Monk, she was standing in front of my house, painting my house. <laughs> now, what's this person doing <laughs> in front of my house? <laughs> so I ended up buying the painting. <laughs> but, uh, she was at that this 20 some odd years ago. She had come a long way. Mm -hmm. Doing some really very, very nice work now. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? Well, you put a word in for the University of Crescent, Mississippi. They're delighted to work with, and I was very extremely pleased with the way they, they did the book. They handled it very, very well. The, the reproductions are. As, as good as you can get in printing mm -hmm. like this, because it's very difficult. Um, they were very generous in the number of images they used in the book, so I was very, I was really pleased when I saw the, the final product. Mm -hmm. I want to ask the George Rodriguez ones, are those uh, from the span of his career, or are they from a particular period? Early, they were early in his career when he came back from California. Mm -hmm. he, at the time he was realizing you know, how much he missed South Louisiana and his oaks. Mm -hmm. So this kind of sort of representation of, of Acadiana, the old trees and the moss, as you see in some of the other paintings. But in, in most cases, dog? I'm sorry. Were they before the blue dog? I'm not sure, but I think so. Yeah. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were before the blue dog. Is that, you know, his manifestations came later for that. Uh -huh. yeah. Any questions? Well, I hope you enjoyed what you did. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else yeah. sit around to talk about it afterwards? I'll be here until <laughs> we get kicked out. Mm -hmm. John, what time is your signing at the Barnes oh. and Noble town? At Barnes and Noble, at two, at two, at one forty-five. One forty-five. One forty-five. Okay, great. 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 And please come over and we can chat there too if you like. <laughs> right. Thank you.